Okay, so let's get started. Um, so skipping the non-calculation questions. Uh, here's the first calculation question. It says, check your intuition and understanding of principle of relativity. Uh, suppose that speed of line, if you're in a pressure cabin, flying at 320 meters per second relative to ground, when you hear someone speak in the airplane, what is the speed of their sound? Well, um, let's read the hint. Constraint experience, blah, blah, blah. And all of that goes down, comes down to it's actually 340 meters per second. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a, a question of reference frames, which you can read about in section 14.1. Um, the textbook, you know, I want everyone to read it. Please read it. Um, it's a, the question of frame of reference. And if you are using the airplane as your inertial reference frame, in that frame where the air is moving, um, in that frame where air is moving with you, the, uh, the regular laws of nature hold, the speed of sound doesn't change from um, where on, on the ground. Now, the one interesting thing about this particular setup is that, um, that you have a medium itself that's moving relative to another reference frame. So if you are standing on the ground and observing the um, sound waves in the airplane, then um, you will see those waves propagating at different speeds uh, relative to you on the ground. So sound wave propagating forward will be faster by this uh, speed here. So it'll be 340 plus 320. It'll be 6 to 60 meters per second. The wave propagating, uh, backward, propagating backward will be sl slower by this amount. So it'll look like it's moving forward at only the, uh, sorry, I guess it's still moving backward, moving backward at only the speed of 20 meters per second. This is kind of a relative speed of calculation. It comes naturally to certain people. To some people, it doesn't. <laughs> um, hopefully, this uh, description here in the hint makes a bit of sense. If not, um, yeah. <laughs> um, <it's, clears throat> this is there just to kind of give you um, a check on your intuition. Um, there's a lot of uh, special relativity that's not intuitive. So if you don't get this, uh, not that big of a deal because it turns out this intuition doesn't work in special relativity anyway. Uh, so let's move on. Um, question four. Okay. Check your understanding of the postulates of special relativity. If you're on, uh, suppose you're on a spaceship moving at half the speed of light, someone fires laser beam within the spaceship at the speed of light. So this question is the light version of this. So, all right, within the spaceship, um, so you would say, all right, speed of light but didn't change. So it's a one speed of light. Got okay. uh, review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, part B. Suppose that someone else on Earth, not moving in the spaceship, is able to observe the same laser beam. So that's once again the. Oh, I don't know if it'll. Hey, it doesn't say. Okay. Um, if you look at that other question again, it's a kind of that part uh, light version of the part B question. It asks what is what range of speeds of the light does the Earth observe? observe? And here. I guess that this is kind of a trick hint in that it might have led you to uh, ignore this, but this is really um, what I want you to review and understand. Section 14.1, Einstein's postulate. And this is the um, unintuitive postulate of Einstein. The first postulate is very intuitive. It's, um, yeah, so let me not dwell on that. It's the second postulate that's not intuitive. And it leads you to say things that you would say intuitively, uh, I don't think that's true. 
And what I would ask you to believe is, well, reliably being true, because it's been extensively tested experimentally, and people have verified it over and over that it's true. <laughs> and the uh, second postulate is the speed of light C, in, that's the speed of light in vacuum, is a constant, independent of the relative motion of the source. It's, uh, that's, it's that speed of light is constant. It doesn't change uh, regardless of what situations you change. So going back here, uh, if you are being tricked, um, you might be tempted to, to answer something like 1.5 and 0 0.5 here. It'll be wrong. They will both be one. This is what I mean. Um, Special relativity is not intuitive. <laughs> um, on the other hand, the answers are much simpler than the intuitive answer. <laughs> so, oh, so I guess this wasn't really a calculation question. I wasted like five minutes on this. Uh, but you know, I, I think this was actually good to cover. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let me move on. Question five, not a calculation question. Question six, calculation question. Okay, so this is uh, practice plugging in numbers. And um, <clears throat> this is uh, what I would recommend, that uh, this is a kind of a complicated formula. It's uh, really easy to make a calculator mistake as you're plugging in those uh, numbers. So um, I guess you could use Wolfram Alpha. Uh, if you are not using Wolfram Alpha, what I would uh, recommend that you do is do this uh, calculation on a calculator step by step. So, um, so let me, so uh, this number here is basically V over C. So let me start out with that. So I'm going to start with um, just taking square of that V over C. So 0 0.001 squared. That's a V over C squared. Okay. All right. Um, so that number there, uh, put into memory. I think that's how, that's how memory works. No, I actually don't know. Uh, let's see. One minus memory recall. Okay, good. <laughs> um, um, okay, so that's the number that goes under the square root. All right. Let me... Uh, put that into memory. <laughs> um, then, well, I guess I actually didn't do that. The next step is taking the square root. So let me take the square root here. All right, uh, that number there. Uh, let me put that into memory. And the very final step in calculating gamma is one over that number. So one divided by that number I put into memory, recall that, there. Okay, so that's gamma. Oh, and yeah, there's this instruction, make sure to put in, you know, significant figures because this is pretty close to one. And for this particular question, I put in uh, enough of uh, tolerance that if you just put in one, it'll tell you it's wrong. Because um, I put in a more stringent, um, um, stringent tolerance than usual. So let me put this off to the side. So you have to put in one point, zero, 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 three more zeros, zero, 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 five. And and after that, it should be fine. So <laughs> it's correct. Yeah. Um, so if uh, you're using your calculator and if you're getting the wrong answer, what I would recommend that you do is um, check with Wolfram Alpha. Um, so now if you're using calculator, once again, this is the order I recommend that you do go in. Uh, just inside out. First, start out with a ratio, 0 0.5 for part B. Square that. That's the V over C squared or V squared over C squared. Put that into memory and do the calculation of 1 minus that number, 0 0.75. Take the square root. Put that into memory and take the reciprocal. 
one divided by that number. And that's gamma. So 1.15, that should be close enough. 1.15. Okay. All right, let's do C. Now C, uh, so here I'm plugging in, um, even though each question is, um, follows the exact same steps, I'm doing all of them because um, you have to watch out for different things depending on what re regime your number is at. Part B is actually the easiest one because you don't have to worry so much about tolerances and significant figures. In A, you have to make sure that you put in all those uh, significant, extra significant figures for gamma. For C, where you have to be careful is, oh, I gave it, be sure to use all the nines. <laughs> Missing a single nine could result in a large error. So, I mean, you know, you can try that on your own. So here, let me just do that. Um, so I'm gonna start out with a V over C squared. So it's a zero point, <laughs> let me count back. Nine, 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 nine. Okay, four more nines. One, two, three, four. Okay, <laughs> that's the given V over C. Square it, put that into memory, one minus that memory stored number uh, equals that. Take the square root, put that into memory, one divided by the number in the memory. That's the gamma factor, um, seven, zero, seven, one. So it's a very large number, um, seven, zero, yeah. 7071. Okay. All right. So uh, that's one calculation example. It's a, um, I give you the formula, and all you have to do is plug in the numbers. Question seven. The Lorentz factor is actually, you can, yeah, yeah. and here is where. Um, um, try some calculation below. Uh, part A is the one that I'm not sure if you can even do that on a calculator. Uh, let me try that on my calculator. Uh, how do I do this? So um, I already derived the formula for V over C for you. It's a square root of one minus one over gamma squared. So um, let me get my calculator out. Um, let me do one divided by gamma squared, which will be parenthesis, one plus, uh, oh yeah, one plus, this is a super tiny number, five times uh, 10 to the power of 15, close of the parenthesis, um, wait, I need to square that. So that's one over gamma squared. Uh, wait. Yeah, that's one over gamma squared. Well, equals. Right, right, right. That That is one over gamma squared. Let me put that into memory. One minus that number in the memory. Take the square root of that. That's my V. Um, something that's very close to 10 times 10 to minus eight. So I guess that's 10 to minus seven. Um, so, uh, well, it doesn't, yeah. Um, so 10 to minus seven in the scientific notation here is one E minus seven. All right, I guess a uh, calculator on the Windows computer can do that. Oh, good. Um, you can also do that on your on Ofram Alpha if you get issues with getting that. Um, okay, let's do, uh, yeah, I'll do parts B and C too. Uh, let me do this a little bit more quickly. I need to leave soon. Um, so I started to one over gamma squared. So it's one divided by gamma two squared. That's one over gamma squared. Store in the memory, 
one minus the number in the memory square root it. And wait. That number is not right. Um, oh, that is weird. It subtracts the minus 0 0.25. Uh, is there a way I can? Well, let me just do square root of 0 0.75. Uh, 0 0.75 square root it. Oh, that is weird. Uh, let me just not press the equal sign. No. Uh, 0 0.75 square rooted. Okay, that's the correct answer, 0 0.866. I don't know. You should always uh, be uh, familiar enough with your own calculator so that if it does something weird, then you can notice. <laughs> Speed corresponding to gamma equals 12. All right, I'm doing the same thing again. One over gamma squared, one divided by gamma squared yeah, that is one over gamma squared stored into memory let me make sure i did yeah one do <laughs> becoming paranoid one minus that number in the memory equals that 0 0.993 on the right um and i need to take the square root of that number to get me, I guess I won't press equal sign this time. Um, get me the, the V over C, 0 0.99, uh, let me put in 65. 0.9965. All right, that's it. Okay, uh, mm, oh, I think I have some more calculation questions. Let's see. Um, All right, uh, so you should read the section 14.2, which will give you the time dilation formula. And the time dilation formula says that if we have something taking some amount of time, tau or delta t na proper time, um, read it through that, please. Um, if you have something that takes delta t na in its own rest frame, then the amount of time it takes in a, another reference frame where the thing is moving is the dilated time. That's the Lorentz factor times delta t naught. So this is the little thing I was trying to skip. The one big part of doing um, this uh, calculation to figure out what the dilated time is, first to figuring out uh, what the Lorentz factor is. That's the, uh, that's the exercise we had to do for question seven. So, wait, sorry. That's the exercise you had to do for question six. So when you're doing question eight, a big part is, well, doing the exact exercise you would do in question six. So let me do that for part A. So I have a V is equal to 0 0.5 uh, C. So um, the, uh, so I, I, I need to write down, what the Lorentz factor is here. Um, so write it down for yourself. That the formula for Lorentz factor is one over square root of one minus V over C squared. So I'm just gonna plug in these numbers into calculator very carefully. Um, so let me do that. So I have V over C, 0 0.5, squared, put that into memory, one minus the number in the memory equals 0 0.75, take the square root, 0 0.866, um, put that in the memory, one divided by that number in the memory. That's the gamma factor. Now, from the time dilation formula, what you know is that the dilated amount of time, T, is equal to the gamma factor times the amount of time that it takes in the uh, rest frame. So um, here, um, 
the time is one microsecond. So um, the time here is just going to become 1.155 microseconds. Now, if this number is different from one, as that will be the case for most of you, uh, make sure to take this number and, and then multiply by gamma. So don't put in just gamma here, 1.155. Uh, here, parts B and C are very similar. You'll just get larger numbers, but you don't really have to worry about stuff. Um, all right, let's keep going. Uh, question nine. Um, oh, good. <laughs> so from the perspective of Alice, Bob is moving towards her at 0 0.8C. Um, and, you know, there's the thing about velocity addition, how this is consistent with this. And I'll just leave you at, you don't need to worry about it. The velocity addition formula is a super complicated formula. I wouldn't really worry too much about learning that formula. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be asking you about, um, asking you quantitative questions on velocity addition formula. I'm like 90%, 95% sure. Um, so here, really the thing that you should be aware of is you have these two different numbers, 0.5c and 0.8c. What number should you use? The number you should use is 0.8c. Because when Alice is doing the measurements, Alice is at rest in her own frame. So, uh, so with that, you also should know length contraction formula. You know, read the section, please. And when you read through the length of contraction formula, what you do get is that length of a thing measured in a frame where it's moving relates to the, its length in its own reference frame through this. It's the length in, the, in its own rest frame, what we call proper length, divided by gamma, or you know, times the square root of uh, one minus v squared over c squared. Uh, let me use uh, uh, this one that's probably more direct and possibly a little bit uh, less calculator number plugging in. So the length in the reference frame where the ruler is moving is equal to the its proper length times square root of one minus v squared over c squared. So uh, here v over c is 0 0.8. So, um, 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.8 squared, put that into memory, 1 minus that thing in the memory equals 0 0.36, take the square root of 0 0.6 again. So that's my 1 over gamma. Multiply that to the... Um, um, oh, oh, meter stick, so it's a meter log in its own reference frame, so oh, multiply it by one. Um, so 0 0.8. So in Alice's reference frame, Bob's meter stick is moving, so she'll me measure it to be shorter uh, at the length of 0 0.6 meters. Now, um, because I am very familiar with um, Lorentz contraction. <laughs> I, without doing the calculation, I know this to be 0 0.6. And um, I guess um, I'll, you think about it on your own, see how that makes sense. Let me just leave that there. I think I have an essay assignment on these uh, relativistic paradoxes, which I hope will give you some more uh, intuitive sense for why, how these two answers can both be right. Um, okay, let's look at question 10. Oh, by the way, um, this one, I know the answer to that. Second postulate of special relativity. So let me just do that first. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so part B is actually easier calculator-wise. So let me do part B first. Um, so you have a uh, relative, the kinetic missile, which is moving at 90% of the speed of light in the um, reference frame where it's fired. But the Thing that doing thing that doing the firing is itself moving at the speed of 0 0.5 c. So pay pay careful attention to the symbols of v and u prime, and make sure you match uh, how you are plugging that in here. So I'm just gonna start out with uh, this factor here. So 
um, I have V um, 0 0.5 times U prime 0 0.9. Um, actually, it's 0 0.5 C times 0 0.9 C. So when you divide it by C squared, you just get rid of the C's. Add that to 1, so plus 1. OK, 1.45. Let me put that into memory. And I need a numerator, uh, V, 0 0.5 plus uh, U prime, 0 0.9 equals 1.4, that's bigger than one, divided by um, the denominator, uh, which was stored into memory, so memory recall, equals 0 0.9655C. So let me put in 0 0.9655. And that should be the correct answer, yeah. And this is uh, how um, this velocity addition formula kind of makes sure that uh, the consequences of special relativity are enforced. So the um, um, so the, the the speed of this projectile, no matter what reference frame you are at, it's always going to be slower than speed of light. Um, so you know the 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 speed of this kinetic missile at a reference, the reference frame of the target was not 1.4 C. It was, well, after going through the formula correctly, it's only 0 0.9655 C. Part A, um, you know, I guess you could go through all this calculation or kind of reading ahead here. You could cheat and use your um, um, uh, your use your common sense in Newtonian mechanics and just to do this plus that, uh, which will give me 0 0.0000002. Now, if you actually plug in the numbers, it'll be a little bit off from that, but I think that's, that'll get graded as correct. <laughs> now, uh, if you want to practice, plug in the numbers. Just be careful with, you know, significant figures and just how tiny the numbers are. 